The NFL is under fire for what's going on with Tua, with this concussion protocol shit, and shit is getting crazy, bro. Now, concussions ain't none to let slide, dog. And football isn't just a contact sport. It's a dangerous game of massive bodies colliding with one another. And while it may seem obvious that this sport can do extraordinary damage to brains and bodies, it's taking far too long for the NFL and medical community and football fans to fully reckon with this. We already seen the many effects a concussion and CTE can cause on the human body. The NFL even downplayed and rejected connections between concussions and brain deterioration for years before finally acknowledging the concussion issue in 2009. And many former players who post-death examinations revealed CTE include Philip Adams, Cole Brandon, Dwight Clark, Louis Kriegmer, Frank Gifford, Chris Henry, Vincent Jackson, Terry Long. Aaron Hernandez is also another victim of CTE and he killed his plug, then went to jail, then committed suicide. If you if you don't know much about that story, I suggest you go, I, I think there's a documentary on Netflix or something, then you can check that joint out, bro. And even the retired former Denver Broncos wide receiver Demarius Thomas, who died last year at the age of 33 after suffering a seizure, became the latest NFL player to be diagnosed with CTE. And then we have Antonio Brown, who's been wilding for the last couple of years, and very recently too. <laughs> very, very recently too, you feel me? You know, he, you know what I mean? he looks like he jacking, he jacking off in the pool. That's crazy, but... You know, let's move on. Um, very recently too. At one point, he was on the news 24-7. Um, I pray he's in the right mental space right now. Um, he's always violent, bro. Oh, okay, he good, bro. Um, yeah. And there's something a lot less sad about a 50-year-old who can't run versus a 50-year-old who can't think. Things we do to one another, okay? Uh, Hell, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just tired and confused right now. That's why I say it. I, I can't really, I can't say it the way I want to say it. Nine, seven, eight, four, three, two. Nine, seven, eight. But this is an ongoing story and it's continued right now with this Tua situation. A couple weeks ago against the Bills on one pass play, Tua was shoved after releasing the ball. Tua was airborne before the back of his head slammed into the field during during the fall. He tried to get right back up on his feet, but was visibly stumbling and fell back down to the ground. Tua was eventually helped to the locker room to be checked out, then came back out to finish the game. Tua was determined not to have a head injury, but instead had a back issue that locked up after the sack. He stumbled from the spasms. And before the game was even over, the NFL Players Association had already requested an investigation into the concussion protocols used by the Miami Dolphins. And the unaffiliated neurologist at the game that allowed Tua to resume play. Now fast forward to Thursday night versus the Bengals, he was starting this game. In the second quarter of the game, Tua was sacked again. And as he was spun to the ground, his head again bounced off the turf and he immediately began to show signs of a potential major concussion. He was taken off the field on a backboard and stretcher. Now, I remember seeing this around the time it first happened, and I was legit scared for Brody. The way his fingers locked up and pointed in different directions, that shit had, that shit had me shot. I never saw anything like that in any football game ever, not gonna lie. Now, just imagine how his family and teammates felt after watching this. Visually, it's just straight difficult to uh, see. And my prayers to Tua and his family, and hopefully this doesn't have a lasting effect for him. But after that, he went to the hospital and then flew back home with the team. Now, the blame, the blame, the blame game, the blame game. After this whole situation, of course, niggas was finna lose their job. Nigga, you about to lose your job. You about to lose. Nah. Niggas about to lose their jobs, you feel me, and get fired. Some people are blaming Mike McDaniels. I don't know him personally. And I wish him well. And I'm not.
casting any aspersions on his character. I don't know him. But I don't like what I see from him. And the reason I don't like what I see from him is that he accepts no accountability whatsoever for what happened to Tua Tungvaloa, and I don't understand how. You're the head coach of the franchise. You're trying to tell us that you're completely at the mercy of a doctor. But to be honest, he's the head coach, man. He doesn't know all that doctor shit, bro. He just get the, he just, he just asked the doctors if he's clear to play, and he said, "Okay, clear to play." You feel me? Even though I saw that man Stephen A. Smith going off on Mike Bedani and the other players, but I don't know. Let me know down below if you think Mike Bedani had a hand in uh, what happened Thursday night against the Bengals. The NPA has fired the independent doctor who cleared to a concussion protocol during the Bills game. Representatives of the NFL and the NFL Players Association plan to interview Tua and make big changes about the concussion protocol too. And also, concussion doctor Bennett Amula says Tua should give up football forever and retire. I'll tell him Tua, my brother, I love you. I love you as much as I love my son. Stop playing. Hang your helmet and gallantly walk away. My father, many years ago, told me that the person who is stronger is the person who walks away. After many years of the NFL trying to fight this thing, they're still trying to fight this thing. After many players each year get affected by concussions and CTE, man. Damn, bro. This whole story makes me want to watch that one Will Smith movie about concussions. I never watched that movie before. But to be honest, I think I think Tua should just cut it and retire, man. It ain't really worth it, bro. Um, not many people uh, make it to the NFL and he achieved that. Um, I feel like it's a good achievement, but when you're dealing with in, when you're dealing with concussions that can like really fuck you up while you're when you're like older in your 50s. And, and all that shit, man. I just don't think it's worth it, bro. You know, that's your whole life, man. This is just a game, bro. You feel me? You can find up way, way other things to get, you know, get paid, bro. You can start a podcast and all that. YouTube. You can ESPN would probably hire that nigga fast. Any sports company would hire that nigga fast, bro. I don't think it's worth it, bro. I don't. I think Tua should. I think um. I think the doctor was right. I think he should just retire. Um. You know, Andrew Luck retired fast, bro. You know, he's still good. And, yeah, I think he should just retire, bro. It ain't, it ain't worth it, bro. Because if he keeps getting sacked and hitting his head on the ground like that, like, imagine the next time he hit, he's hit his head on the ground like that, it's just going to, his brain is going to, like, sense that and it's going to, because it's not properly, you know, properly healed. So, you feel me? It's, it's just, it, like, once you get a concussion, like, that shit going to stay with you, bro. Like, you feel me? So yeah, bro. I, I just think he should just hang the cleats up, man. It, it ain't really worth it, bro. It ain't really worth it, man. That's your, that's your health, bro. But yeah, let me know what y'all think Tua should do down in the comments below, man. Hopefully y'all like, comment, and sub, man. Love y'all.